Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today's episode of Michael Fitzroy TV is sponsored by the letter B for Batman. Today we're looking at more Batman Legends of the Dark Knight. This time issues 21 through 23, written by one of my absolute favorite Batman writers, Mike W. Barr, illustrated by one of my all-time favorite comic book artists, Bart Sears. Remember him? Anyway, so cool. Can't wait to show these to you guys. So make sure you hit subscribe and like, and I'm going to cue the intro, and I'll be right back. It's Troy TV. Comic book art critiques. It's the art pizza, it's our guest in the way. It's the reference and the geeky gay. It's a deal of comics for the day. Help me up and turn that page. Michael Fitz Troy. All right, so here we go. Batman Legends of the Dark Knight. One of my favorite Batman series ever, an, an anthology series that had a quite lengthy run and quite an impressive roster of creative uh, talent behind it. I've covered many issues on this channel and I'm excited to bring you three issues by Mike W. Barr and Bart Sears. Bart Sears is such a cool comic book artist, kind of underrated. Um, he has been around forever and has done like Justice League Europe, I want to say, Spider Woman, the one written by John Byrne. Um, I can't even tell you what else, like Brute and Babe, um, you know, some indie stuff here and there, but he's just like such a great comic book artist. Love his stuff, love his style. And we're going to look at it right now. So this is issue one, Faith, part one of three. And the art automatically is amazing. Mike W. Barr, writer. Bart Sears, pencils. Randy Elliott, inks. Willie Schubert, letterer. Steve Olaf, colorist. That's uh, a good name. Went on to color Spawn, if not at the same time, because this is 1991. I forgot exactly when Spawn came out. So this is maybe right before Spawn. Um... Very cool. I noticed the colors are a little dark, and um, it's funny because that's one of the things I liked but sort of didn't like about, like, a lot of the early image books is, like, with all this digital coloring, I felt like they really leaned into going kind of dark, and I'm not sure if that's because they didn't realize how dark it would print or what the deal was, but it looked a little dark to me. This one isn't too offensive, but... Um, I love Bart Sears' style. He draws very muscular, very big, imposing figures. Very sort of, in some ways, angular and a little severe, like, uh, is that Leslie? Dr. Leslie looking a little rough there. Such great, I love little artistic choices like that. That looks great, how most of that's in silhouette. Great spotting of blacks, great use of negative space. Amazing spottings of black here. This is funny because um, I feel like this was uh, such a top um, book at the time that I feel like when artists would come on, you know, it gave a lot of oppor artists opportunities to draw Batman that might not have happened otherwise because the stories were either one, two, or three parts. So they had time to do it. And I feel like they always like really upped their game. It's kind of weird with this bad imagery going on. War of the Gods, um, maybe I'll cover that one day, but that was kind of disappointing. Great art there by George Perez, of course, or actually Cynthia Martin inked by George Perez. Obviously, George being a little heavy-handed with his inks and bringing his style to the forefront, which is fine with me as I'm the biggest George Perez fan. I remember really liking the story and really thinking it was great. And like I said, Mike W. Barr is like one of my favorite writers ever. I've been doing some Batman and the Outsiders and he wrote that. I always loved Bart Sears' pencils though. I think he's so good. He's just like a great storyteller. Great sense of perspective. His use of perspective is really good. And just like his figure art. You know, he used to draw for Wizard Magazine. They would do this, uh, for the most part, I guess it was monthly, called uh, Brute and Babe. And his like generic uh, female and male superhero characters, which sort of, I think, eventually got their own book. But it was basically like uh, 
how to draw and he would, you know, do art lessons every month. And that was one of the better things to come out of Wizard for sure. I was a fan of Wizard. I did like Wizard Magazine, but it did have its issues within its issues. Ha ha ha. Double Van Dam, Double Impact. I was the biggest Van Dam fan. I was the biggest Van Dam, Fam, Fam Dam. And I loved all those Van Dam movies. I wish he would just continue to keep doing them. Is there a demand for that? Maybe he's, uh, I think maybe he's going to be in the next Expendables movie. I guess that's where old action heroes go to die, figuratively and literally. Part three. Oops, we skipped one. Great cover there, Batman backed against the wall. Such, you know, I this is what I love about uh, old comic book covers is they always told a story. I think it was always important, whether it was just like a, a real image from the interior or just sort of a reference to something happening inside the book, rather than just like a pinup or some sort of goof or whatever. So, Mike W. Barr, Bart Sears, Randy Elliott, Willie Schubert, Steve Olaf, Dooley Clark and Hell for editors. Sounds like a either a uh, lawyer or a uh, funeral home. Great upshot perspective there. The colors are a little interesting for this. It's, I feel like this should be darker. I don't know. Suddenly, I'm an art critic. What do, we, what do I mean, suddenly? I've been an art critic all along. Actually, I like the colors on this page. This page is great. Great use of negative space. Great use of spotting of blacks. I guess there's a reason they picked Bart Sears to do art lessons for Wizard. Great shot here. It's funny because I'm seeing, like, a... A lot of these Batman Legends of the Dark Knight, the art seems very influenced by what David Mazzucchelli did in Batman Year One, and that makes perfect sense. I mean, he really sort of turned Batman on its ear and just created such a visual look and world. Okay, now I want this flyer. I don't think I had this because I'm not sure I was the biggest Gil Kane fan of the sign. And blah, blah, blah. Oh, maybe I do have this. Begins in Batman Legends of the Dark Knight number 24. I think I do have it, so stay tuned for that, kids. Great, great art. I love Bart Sears. He's one of those artists who have been around forever, always does a great job, always happy to see his work. Interesting. This is very interesting, and I remember this book too, though I don't think I got it because, for real, I wasn't a, a Norm Brayfogel, um fan at the time, but Batman Holy Terror, and then Frank Miller wanted to do that book, Batman Holy Terror, but then he wound up just doing it on his own because it was too off the rails to be a Batman canon book. But I guess, you know, there are only so many titles available especially when you're referencing something else. Great silhouette of Batman then. Uh-oh. It's always a problem when Batman's cowl comes off. All right, let's move on to the third and final installment of Batman Legends of the Dark Knight Faith. Part three of three, Mike W. Barr, Bart Sears, Randy Elliott. Ooh, that is a great splash page there. I love it. Automatically brings the drama. It's always um, frightening to see Batman in peril like that. This is such an old thing, like an old storytelling device from this era when we still had landlines that were, you know, not that were connected with a cord. I kind of love that. Breaking up the panel of two people talking on the phone with the telephone cord. See, that's just another fun way of using comic book art to tell the story. 
Bart Sears always had such like great angles and perspective. Like he always just kept it very interesting, I felt. Tough enough for TV land, Superman on Nick at Night. I need to watch some of this old Superman. They look so much fun. I haven't seen them in forever and a day since I watched them as a little boy in the 30s and 40s. Just kidding. Could you imagine? I'm 165, by the way. I don't, not really. I just sound like it. Solo Flight, Black Canary, written by Sarah Byam, layouts by Trevor Von Eden, and finished artwork by my least favorite finisher, Dick Giordano. Although I have to say, I'm loving this. That looks really good. Hmm. Color me curious. So everything is off the rails here. The caca's hitting the fan. I, now I want a beret with a bat symbol on it. Hmm. See, that would, like, if I were in charge of DC and marketing and all that stuff, like, I would just mine through all the old stories and come up with fun products like that that I'm sure people would love and enjoy. Would you not wear, I know you're probably thinking, I would never wear a beret, but throw a bat symbol on it. Now how do you feel? So please, for lack of any other reason, aside begging for interaction with you guys, please leave in the comments how you feel about whether you would wear a bat beret or not. Anyway, another amazing run on Batman Legends of the Dark Knight from Mike W. Barr and illustrator Bart Sears being ranked, ranked by inked by Randy Elliott. Totally amazing. If you guys love Batman, this is where you need to be. Batman Legends of the Dark Knight. A ton of great stories by a ton of major talent. Highly recommend it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit like, share my content, and I'll bring you some more later. Take care.